So folks, as we speak, things are brewing, and none of it is good news for old Donnie. You might have thought to yourself, long weekend, not a lot happening, but that's not quite correct, as we get more and more of a sense from everybody observing his legal peril, especially the immediate stuff having to do with the hush money payments in Manhattan, Trump's first actual indictment, is that the legal heat on him is building, and more and more people are saying, that Donald Trump could end up behind bars even before being convicted based on his continued threats and incitement of threats towards the judge, the prosecution, witnesses, and the families of some of those groups as well. And this is also connected to a broad, reignited effort to ban Donald Trump. And my God, guys, it's actually succeeding in many ways, and we're going to talk about that. Listen to these clips, because they lay out that while a lot of people were skeptical anything was going to happen with regard to Donald Trump getting in trouble with his threats, the tone is changing very quickly, and there's immediate and medium-term consequences for that SOB. You heard that correctly. Republicans have apparently come full circle. It turns out, after all their outrage and fear-mongering, they are the ones who want to defund law enforcement. Remember, the job of the Justice Department is not just to file abstract legal briefs. It is to keep our country safe. That phrase is literally in their mission statement. They also oversee the FBI, which handles domestic and international terrorism, organized crime, white collar crime, as well as the ATF, which plays a major role in fighting drug cartels. But these so-called champions of law and order want to defund, limit funds, and make cuts. Those are their words, not mine, to those very agencies. So it's not just Republican rhetoric, it's also their actions. After the January 6th that insurrection, 21 Republicans voted against awarding the Congressional Gold Medal to the very officers, the very officers who protected their lives. Instead, many have visited the January 6th defendants currently in jail. Donald Trump's own budget during his last year in office actually proposed cutting funds to local law enforcement. So if you worry about crime and want law enforcement to be fully funded and supported, the only place you should be directing your outrage for not doing more, it turns out, is MAGA Republicans and their now indicted leader. The prosecutors raised the issue of Donald Trump's incendiary speech that is likely to incite violence but they did not specifically ask Judge Marchand to impose or consider a gag order or a limited restriction on Donald Trump's speech or his posts. I wish they had gone that extra step. Donald Trump retreated to Mar-a-Lago, made the same threats mm -hmm. and inflammatory statements last night. Now I hope the prosecutors will um, seek to have him brought back into court, maybe on a show cause order, and have the judge force Donald Trump and his legal team to show cause why a gag order should not be imposed. All of this is sort of on the road to contempt or on the road to pretrial detention because you refuse to abide by the conditions set by the judge of pretrial release. I wish the prosecutors had been a little bit more forward leaning, trying to take on Donald Trump's, you know, dangerous speech that there is a judge and there is a role to play. But let me tell you, Ari, there are judges, including Judge Marchand, who, by the way, has been a judge for a very long time. And we're talking Manhattan here, right? They've seen it all, right? They've, it's criminal yep. court, just like the, the television program, Criminal Court. Crazy stuff happens in Manhattan. So they have seen when, it, when the occasional defendant acts out, those defendants learn what will happen. There could be gag orders. There can be, I'm not saying this is going to happen here, but defendants who act out physically, they can be restrained physically, and ultimately they can be barred from the courtroom. Now, that's an extraordinary remedy, right. but they can be barred from participating so, in their own trial. And it's important that you show that, again, we talk about how this is uh, extreme, the prosecutor's warning about it, and you're saying most defendants don't even do it. Uh, I want to play Mr. Takapina's response today outside of court. First of all, that picture was not him swinging a baseball bat. I mean, if you want to distort the facts, go right ahead. I won't address that. Yes, it is. He wasn't swinging a baseball bat at anyone's head. That was a picture of him showing off an American-made bat. Someone else put a picture of the district attorney next to him and in an article posted that. That's not his article. That's not his photos. 
I, I got to tell you, trying to make light and make a joke about threatening somebody with a baseball bat, I mean, that's reprehensible in and of itself. Um, the idea that Joe Tacopina is trying to paint a mustache on a pig snout here is, is, is really offensive, frankly. Um, and it's not going to help his client with Judge Mershon. And we've put it up as evidence. This is the image which they knowingly chose to post along with talk about uh, taking back the country, protesting, death, danger, destruction. How, how, how is that, if you are defending Donald Trump, how, having come from a hearing where the judge singles out, and he used the word, I'm concerned, it's yeah. in the transcript, I'm concerned about this defendant's conduct. How do you go outside on the courthouse steps and say, yeah. I got no problem with this, and I'm going to make a joke about it, and you've got to go back in front of Judge Mershon. How is he going to react to that? Um, part of law enforcement um, that can look at this. I don't know if this is outside of the FBI's jurisdiction, um, but, you know, it's a little bit complicated. Mm. You know, I, 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 at this point, I think it's probably not not just a state criminal law matter, but it could be a federal law matter. And I think um, I think it's important to look at that so that we so it's very hard for um, judges to try to, you know, impose any kind of gag orders. I know I know that at the what I've heard from reporting from inside the courtroom, um, the judge expressed, you know, concern about like, as you mentioned, the baseball bat and the other sort of uh, threats of violence. Um, but I think I think there needs to be um, consequences and, you know, a talking to, uh, you know, because the judge, I remember the judge um, in the Roger Stone, one of the Roger Stone cases, um, uh, the, I'm getting, I might be getting, maybe there's only one, I'm getting the Manafort cases confused. No, it was, Roger, it was Roger Stone. Yeah, in the Roger Stone case where there was this gag order and then we find out he's still, you know, using his social media, maybe it was Instagram or something else. And put up a picture of the judge's head with cross, you know, cross hairs, you know, and mm -hmm. obviously what that means. And yet, even though she hauled his, his, his took us into court at the end of the day, there was no real consequences. So I think the worst thing you can do um, is threaten consequences and then not, not enforce them. And I think it's best. But why, why? Why is it first them? amendment issues? Well, no, I mean, I just think he gave him a, you know, in other words, she didn't lock him up again. I don't know. I mean, maybe not not wanting to make him a martyr. So I think that this had, I think that if I were the judge, um, if there's any federal jurisdiction, I'd make those referrals if I was concerned. So you can see, I just played you a few clips there. One is Glenn Kirshner. And again, when he first talked about these things, he almost would, would to, to, you know, not to get people's hopes up, said there's almost no chance this will happen, but he could be detained before trial. But now he doesn't seem to be quite so 100% convinced that it's not going to happen. I still think it's probably unlikely, and he probably does as well. But you know what he's saying, in effect, is Donald Trump is doing all the things to get you thrown behind bars in advance of your trial. He's doing all of the things, saying all of the things, breaking all of the rules, taking all of the judges' instructions and then spitting them out, all of that. And it notes also that, you know, all of this would be extraordinary, like to, to pun not, not just because he's Trump, but just in general. It's extraordinary to punish someone in these sorts of ways and for the judge to make the comments they've made to Trump and his team in this sort of trial. But it's extraordinary, not because uh, it's a witch hunt or because Donald Trump is being unfairly treated, but because he's been exceptionally dangerous in his rhetoric. You even have Mary Trump and her team, you know, saying, uh, you know, and I think not without reason, that this is, um, this is, this is the kind of thing that's probably going to get the FBI very concerned about this individual case, but also just in general. And it's, of course, it's all baked into the hypocrisy. This is the party of law and order, the party that supposedly loves law enforcement. They love law enforcement. And we guys, you know, progressives, Democrats, liberals, socialists, whatever, anybody that's not a right winger, we all supposedly hate law and order in all its forms. And yet it's Donald Trump on the one hand calling to defund police, but only the police investigating him. But two, to, to, to put law enforcement, which again is not just 
rank and file cops, but his prosecutors, uh, people working at the DOJ and FBI, white collar investigators, people like that. He wants to put their lives and careers in danger, not out of a principle of you know wanting to reallocate police resources to social services, which is what a lot of people on the left want, but just to stop investigating him. And this is where he gets into trouble. And this is one of the reasons Trump's been really silent about what happened in Tennessee. He hasn't really taken a stand for or against it. Because what happened to them, totally unjustified, combined with Donald Trump's recent moves, has reignited the discussions around the 14th Amendment. And there's a new, renewed push to have Donald Trump banned from office via the 14th Amendment. And what I've, ta- I've talked about this many times. It would specifically apply in many cases to some of the former slave states, the Confederate states, because frankly, they were given you know, less of a leeway given that they were traitorous and Donald Trump could be banned from these states, right? Because of his traitorous actions on J6 and the continued threats and now the growing effort by Republicans to target people with similar provisions with far less merit increases his danger. And we know that Donald Trump could be banned from certain states, still hypothetically run, but Trump can't win without the electoral votes of states like Georgia and Florida and many others. Donald Trump's in big trouble. He's in massive trouble. Ultimately, we don't know what's going to go down, but he's marching himself right towards a ban on many ballots via the 14th Amendment. This stuff doesn't help. And he's also marching himself towards an orange jumpsuit even before and a conviction.